you very much. Uh, this is nice. Um, that's how I start the punk rock show. This is nice. You kids like Fugazi? I like Fugazi. I only know waiting room. Um, it's good to, you know, if I had three wishes, the first wish would be that dogs were real. <laughs> the second wish would be that dogs had always been real. <laughs> and the third wish would be that no one could remember what things were like before. <laughs> If you, if you did not enjoy that joke, this is a good time to go get a beer. <laughs> Next nine minutes it's gonna be real similar. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit tonight about the importance of creativity because uh, I feel like that's something we're kind of losing as a society, you know? We don't care about it as much as I think we used to or should. Um, and I'll give you the perfect example of it. Everyone wants to sponge off someone else's good idea. Like, the other day I'm in Walmart, and I see they're now making a board game version of Words with Friends. <laughs> yeah, y'all see the problem? A board game version of the Words with Friends. <laughs> I don't know if you all know this, but there already is a board game version of Words with Friends. And there's been a board game version of Words with Friends for 50 years! <laughs> and it's called Mousetrap, and it's super fun. <laughs> Turn this little cramp and then come down and kick the boots and go, <laughs> catch the mouse eventually. It's a long way to go around, but it's a fun game. What's next? A board game version of the movie Clue? <laughs> I don't think so, not for this ombre. Never called myself an ombre before. I like it. <laughs> Take it in and with it. This happens all the time, though. Like, uh, uh, I feel escape rooms are another good example, you know? Like, every city I go to now, there's like two or three different escape rooms you can visit. Let me tell you all something. I've had an escape room in my basement for 17 years, and no one's ever gotten out of there. <laughs> But I care about a little thing called quality. <laughs> Look it up, America. Look it up. And it's not that hard to come up with an original idea, you know, if you just put in a little bit of effort. Here's a thing I've been doing recently. You're all welcome to try this at home. What I do now when I'm playing cards with a group of my friends, and it's my turn to like lay down a card, what I'll do is I'll just look at my hand for a little bit too long, and eventually I'll go, let's make this interesting. <laughs> and then I'll just lay down a naked picture of myself. <laughs> I'll live it up family uno night. <laughs> Trying to skip that, Grandma, you can't. <laughs> Because it's not your turn next. <laughs> Here's an idea I had. What about a movie with a bunch of talking babies, but it's a drama? <laughs> no one's ever thought of that. It's never been fun. And I feel like we all go see it because we're fun people. <laughs> You have to imagine it, you know, like, go, you tell the president, nap time is over. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's set during Pearl Harbor, and it's called a day that will live in infancy. <laughs> right? That's pretty good. That, by the way, is not the stupidest joke I've ever written. <laughs> Would you all like to hear it? The stupidest joke I've ever read? Yeah, yeah cause like I said, you guys are fun. Um, hey, everybody. If I get any poorer, I'm going to have to start drinking Pap's Honorable Mention. 
they get yoked for the punk rock show. Oh wait, hold on, I forgot about this one. This one's way stupider. Um, the other day, I got a blowjob from a girl with dry mouth, and now I have cotton balls. What? <laughs> Not even medically possible, you silly goose. <laughs> it's a fun one. Um, I wanted to tell this story tonight. It's a little, like, uh, insidey for comedy, but I figure, like, at this festival, there's a lot of, like, big comedy nerds like myself. We're super, so maybe, like, yeah, I, I, I know. I know, Daniel. We're super. You're also just the regular kind. Well, I mean. Um, um, sometimes when you do a comedy show, like, one out of every ten times, uh, someone will come up uh, to you before the show, someone who's working on the show, and say, hey, what music do you want us to play when you walk on stage? And it's not like a necessary, important part of the show at all. It doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt anything. It's just like a little fun, extra, whatever. And the important thing to know is that I would never bring it up. I would never bring it up. I would never ask. But if someone asked me, I have my answer locked and loaded, ready to go. And that answer is Linus and Lucy by Henry Mancini. <laughs> We all know it. If you think you don't know it, you do know it. It's also known as the Peanuts theme, and it has been in every Charlie Brown cartoon you've ever seen. Also, it's not by Henry Mancini. It's, I found out later, it's by Vincent Garaldi. I always thought it was by Henry Mancini. Henry Mancini wrote the Pink Panther theme, which would obviously be a ridiculous thing to walk on stage to. <laughs> that as it may. And I've never asked for it. But if someone asks me, that's what I say, then they play it, and it's fine, except for the one time it was not. I was doing a show in Indianapolis uh, at this club, and someone was like, hey, what do you want me to play when you walk on stage? And I said, locked and loaded, ready to go, I was like Linus and Lucy, uh, also known as the Peanuts theme. And he said, no, really, what do you want? And that is what I wanted. So I said, the thing that I said. Which seems rude and sarcastic, but he left me no choice. And then he said, no, like, pick a real song. And you're not gonna believe this, but I swear that is true. There's like two minutes, or not two, there's like 10 seconds, which is a long time, in my head, where I was like, do I not know what a song is? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. I, a grown adult man, thought I might not know what it, well, well now I don't know why I threw the word man in there. That doesn't mean to, you know how women don't be knowing what songs is? <laughs> women be knowing what songs is, and I be knowing what songs is, and we all be knowing what songs is. <laughs> So you'll be happy to hear, I stuck to my guns, and I was like, I think that's a song! <laughs> and he said, no, like pick something upbeat. And I don't know if you all remember the song from your childhoods, but it goes like, da 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 just to, just to see what would happen, just to see what would happen. I went, okay, um, do you have Ball with the Ball by Kid Rock? <laughs> and he went, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. I only asked for like the best known jazz composition of the entire 20th century. He acted like I was insane. I said Ball with the Ball by Kid Rock, and he was basically like, Oh yeah, of course, we keep that queued up at all times, but that's what most people pick. <laughs> so I went on stage to blow with the blow my camera. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember that song. 
you know, from the last time you listened to your copy of the CD. <laughs> He goes, my name is Ken Rock. <laughs> and then I walked on stage. <laughs> Never seen a group of people so disappointed in my entire life. All right, that's all my time. Thank you guys very much.